who says a Dollar Tree DIY has to be complicated. I've got some easy DIYs for you that you can do very, very easily and you can get most of the supplies from Dollar Tree. I'm Jamie, the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome back to my channel. And for this first DIY, we're gonna take two of these battery-operated candle holders. I have these wooden candle holders that I did pick up from either Hobby Lobby or Michaels. You can find these at a lot of different craft stores. And then we're going to use some of these wooden Jenga block pieces that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. You could use a regular wood block if you found one that was bigger than the candle holder. And then I have these great feather signs that I did pick up at Dollar Tree and then also some twine because we're going to have to do a little bit of a repair job on those feathers. Unfortunately, one of my little feathers broke and I did glue it back together. However, the glue just, uh, it didn't hold it as well as I was hoping. I didn't really want to paint this one, so we are going to wrap it instead in this twine just to kind of help reinforce the stem of that feather, but then also just to make sure that um, you don't really see that crack because, again, I'm not wanting to paint those feathers themselves. So go ahead and add a little bit of glue onto the back of your feather um, stem. I guess it's the stem. Is that the stem? Let me know in the comments below if you know what the uh, kind of pointy part of the feather is. So we are just wrapping these with hot glue. Pretty easy to do. Just add a little bit of hot glue, wrap around, add some more hot glue, wrap around. Or if you're going to be pretty quick about it, you could just add a stripe of hot glue right around the back and then just start wrapping. Either way works really, really fine. And then uh, once you've got that done go ahead and trim it off and then just add your glue right back into place and those will be ready to go so after you've got that all taken care of, it's time to go ahead and start working with your Jenga block pieces. You're going to be gluing sets of three together. And this thickness of this block is really dependent on kind of your personal style and what your vision is with this. If you can find a wood block again that will sit on top of your candle holder, then totally use that by all means. Um, I did want to do that, but unfortunately in my stash, I did not have a wooden block that was going to be big enough so I decided to create my own. The Jenga block pieces kind of worked out perfectly, so it was really great. If you take a straight edge, this one, by the way, did come from Dollar Tree, and uh, you can use that to kind of line up your Jenga blocks just to make sure that those pieces are nice and straight. And then once you've got your, I think in my case, I did six sets all done, you can start kind of piecing those together. And to piece those together, you are just going to add some hot glue across the top of that. I did a kind of a thin layer and did made sure it had decent coverage. And then again, just kind of straightening it up, not only against the straight edge, but you can use your countertop or your work surface just to make sure that those blocks are going to be as straight as possible. So we are essentially now creating a base for our wooden candle holders. And I'm making two of those because we are doing two of our feather sconces now with these. So once you've got your blocks all set up and you've got them to the height that you want, go ahead and glue your wooden kind of candle holder piece right on top of that. You can put it in the center and uh, you're going to do this. Um, you could do this with hot glue. You could do this with wood glue. You could do this with super glue. The great thing about this is because even the battery operated candles are pretty lightweight, the regular hot glue or the regular wood glue is going to work perfectly with this project. So have fun with it. Don't worry about it. And then we're going to paint everything. Now I am using an ink uh, paint by Waverly. It's chalk paint. And uh, I am going to just do two coats on my candlesticks. Now you're going to make sure that you've got not only the base covered, but of course the candle holder. You're going to want to do a little bit of the inside then and of course you are going to do the bottom of this because that will show on there you could i guess technically get away with not doing one side if you really wanted to but not a big deal we're just going to go ahead and just get 
these all shaped up and beautiful. That way they are ready to go for the next phase, which is gluing this together to make your sconce. Now, unfortunately for this next part, this is kind of where I messed up. I wanted to paint the feathers in and I just wanted to add a little bit more of a black accent. So as you can see, everything is going really well here. I'm kind of filling in that part of the feather. What's really great about these pieces too is that they are lined up there. So it's pretty easy to get in there with some of the details and things. Um, I was looking for my tape because I thought that I would need my tape to go ahead and just kind of, you know, outline that a little bit more so I could fill in some of those smaller areas and unfortunately this is where I had a little accident. I ended up spilling some water on this and then it smeared everything. It was not a good look and um, I was not very happy with it. Now the only way that I could figure out to fix this to still kind of give it that modern farmhousey kind of vibe was to just start kind of wiping away the paint spill and kind of turning it into a um, let's say a um, kind of a smudged uh, look, you know, just kind of aged look. And uh, you can see here, it's not horrible. It does actually dry a little bit lighter. And uh, once that did dry, I was happy with it. You guys are still seeing it. So obviously I'm happy with it. But uh, yeah, keep your work surface clean and free of um, distractions and debris. And uh, yeah, so you don't have the same mess. We used my candles to kind of get an idea of where I wanted to glue down my candle holders. And I'm just going to use one of those feather lines actually as kind of my point. And uh, I'm just going to line those up, kind of get an idea of where I want to place these. And then I'm simply just going to add some hot glue onto the back of my candle pieces here. And we are going to glue them right to the feathers. Now, the other thing that I thought was really pretty cool about this is that um, it just has a really cool vibe. The candles are battery operated, so those are super easy. How fun are these? I love these. And by the way, I just glued a very simple hook on the back of these with the um, kind of rope and hot glue and tape method. And uh, I love the way that these looked. I think that they actually turned out pretty good despite my little Nafu. Now this DIY, this is going to be really, really easy. I have these oversized paper clips. I got these from Timu during my last Timu haul. And uh, I thought that these could be fun for like a teenager room. Um, you're literally taking the paper clips. You are connecting them. Um, alternate them, have fun with the colors, eliminate the colors maybe that you don't like. I thought that all of these colors are great and it was fun just to create a really long paper clip chain. Now you could do this with smaller paper clips if you really wanted to. Um, take some photos. I didn't have any like printed photos so I went ahead and just printed some of mine off from Facebook and um, these are just a variety of photos with a lot of friends and different celebrity friends and YouTube friends and just fun stuff that I've been able to do throughout my life. And uh, as you can see, I went consistent and just printed them all on just regular paper from black and white printer. However, if you were to recreate this, I would probably take your photos and maybe mount them on like a cardboard or some card stock or something just to give them a little bit more sturdiness. I do think like if you use Polaroid pictures, for example, or if you use actual prints that you had printed, that would be sturdier and that would be much better. This is my grandma, by the way. Isn't she beautiful? I unfortunately lost her in uh, 2017 and uh, it's really hard. So take your photos and just clip them to your paper clip strand. Have a good time of it. By the way, did you notice one of those photos is my YouTube friends? And then one of those photos is the scandal that's going on right now. Oh, now another DIY that can be so easy. This vase, for example, I saw this vase at Dollar Tree. I liked it. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't like the color. I really liked the size of it. And I'm telling you, this is such an easy DIY. Don't let anybody tell you this is not a DIY. Take it outside, spray paint it your favorite color. It goes with your decor. So, so easy and such a great way to really customize something. 
Now, this is another great and easy DIY. Have you seen these apple frames that you can pick up in the crafter square section? How perfect is this going to be for a back to school gift for the teacher? I took some bright red apple gloss spray paint. I took it outside and spray painted my apple. I just did the entire thing. I knew that I could cover the stem really, really easily by using one of my Arteza acrylic paint markers. You could certainly tape it off if you wanted to, but you may remember my little spill earlier. I um, didn't have my tape. I still don't know where my tape is. And uh, uh, we're going to cover up that stem. Now, I did just go ahead and use a couple coats of my acrylic pen here from Arteza. And again, it was so easy. Such great coverage. I really do love working with these. I think that this could be a really fun gift, too, that could be personalized really, really easily. If you had a Cricut or if you had additional paint markers, you could customize this, put the teacher name on it. I think it's adorable. This is kind of a nautical inspired DIY. I found this blue uh, paint that I picked up from Hobby Lobby or Michaels. It's a blue kind of matte paint and I thought that this could be perfect to create this fun little crate with. And uh, I took this crate and we are going to spray paint that blue. Then I have these kind of uh, garland strands or these tassel strands that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. And I wanted to um, untie this knot that was in here because I was wanting to turn these into handles. Now, you could certainly keep the starfish or the, I think that's a sand dollar. You guys gave me a hard time about it before when I described it. I'm pretty sure that's a sand dollar. Um, the white one, right? That's a sand dollar and a starfish. Anyway, I uh, decided to go ahead and just cut the string because I couldn't get the knot out and I just re-strung these. Now, the um, little sand dollar and the starfish, we're just going to put that aside because we're going to use that for another project, or at least that's what I thought. You'll end up seeing that I did end up kind of changing my mind on that. And then just because I wanted to keep this consistent, I did go ahead and just re-strand the other one as well. That way the twine and everything had the same consistency because these are going to be turned into handles. Now, I was at Michael's not too long ago and they had these little wooden crates and they had these beaded handles to them and they wanted like $25 for them and I thought, there's no way I can totally recreate this and make my own version of this. So that's exactly kind of what I'm doing here. Now, I did take my crate out and I did spray paint that. So that's drying right now. It's really yucky outside here. And um, the backyard is just looking bad. So that's why I chose to not show spray painting on camera this time. Let me know in the comments below if you really want me to show you spray painting. Happy to do that, um, especially once the backyard is better in better shape. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tie some knots onto the ends of these, and we're going to make sure that those knots are nice and tight up against those beads because, again, these are kind of serving as handles. So once I've got that done for both of these, we are ready to start the next step of gluing our handles onto our wooden crate. Now, to do that, I did not want these um, extra string pieces to show. And because I've got the crate here and it's all spray painted blue, and I even like the way that little bit of the wood is showing through, we're going to take those knots, we're going to pull them really, really tight, and then we're going to cut our uh, twine right off at the end of that knot because rather than taking those long pieces of twine and kind of sticking them down inside of the crate, we are going to make this to where the um, the ties look like they're sitting right on top of either corner of the tray, almost like the handles are kind of already built into the trays, if that makes sense. So when you take your knot, you're just going to glue your knot down onto the ends of your, your tray or your crate, either one, and uh, just kind of hold them in place until that glue dries. And then you're going to take your beading and do it with the other side as well. Now, you probably noticed my beads are all different colors there. Some of them are teal, some of them are white, some of them are navy. I don't really mind that, but if you wanted to, of course, customize your beads, make them a little more cohesive on both sides, 
have fun with it. Totally do it. That's the point of a DIY, right? So I've got the foam pieces here. These were just some scrap pieces I had. I was originally going to do all boxwoods on this because I don't really have a big assortment of flowers just yet, like uh, faux flowers. And uh, I'm just not digging the ones that I'm finding at Dollar Tree. A subscriber of mine did tell me, though, that her daughter found a like carts full of uh, flowers that you can get at Walmart now that are marked down to like 25 cents. So let me know in the comments below, have you seen these? Because I need to head to Walmart ASAP. Now, I don't love the flower combination here that I've got. These do kind of remind me of a little bit of a beach setup. So I did add that uh, sand dollar on the outside of it. And I think it's kind of cute. I think it's really cute. I do think it would be better with some different flowers though. What do you think? Now, Dollar Tree has some really cool candle making kits, and I thought, why not take that same concept and make it a little bit larger? Now, the wax pellets that I have there, those are from the uh, Pop Shelf store, and so are the candle wicks. Now, the two bowls are ones that you've seen at Dollar Tree before. I'm going to use hot glue for this because this is going to be kind of a quick DIY. This is also something that I'm going to use inside of my house. If you wanted to use this for outdoor or if you wanted this to be a little bit more sturdy, you could certainly use hot glue or, or you could use uh, super glue or even like an E6000. For my process here, Hot glue is going to work just fine. So go ahead and glue those together. Wipe away any of the glue that might kind of squeeze out between there. And uh, you're going to have something that's going to hold pretty, pretty well. Now for mine, I wanted to go ahead and just add the wick into the bottom of that. And to do that, I'm going to wipe out the bottom there. And I'm just going to add a dollop of hot glue down there. And we're going to take our wick and we are going to just stand it straight up in there. Now I did kind of hold it in place again, got to find my tape so I could uh, have some support here with this wick, but I ended up kind of pushing it to the side. I'm not going to wet. I'm not going to melt these wax pellets. Instead, I'm going to use them just like those candle making kits that you can get at Dollar Tree. Now mine happen to be all white, but you could certainly use different colors if you wanted to. Just go ahead and fill up your candle with those wax pellets and uh, position your wick around. Maybe add some more pellets if you want to. Obviously, you're going to have to trim down that wick, so no worries there. Once you've got the wax at the level you want, then you've got a very cool candle holder. And as the heat from the candle kind of melts your wax, it's going to be very, very cool looking and almost look like rocks. I really love the way that this turned out, and it's so, so simple. Now, if you guys remember, I did this wreath a couple of videos back, but I wanted to kind of give it a little bit more color. I found these Black Eyed Susans and thought that this could be a fun DIY. And I also found these wooden dragonflies. These did end up coming from, I believe I got these at Michael's. And uh, we are going to add this to the wreath that I already have. Now for the sunflowers are the... Um, Black Eyed Susan, sorry. We are going to take my lineman pliers. These are the best tool to have in your arsenal. They cut through these wires amazingly. There is not much pressure. So if you don't have a lot of hand strength, these are really, really good. I turned my mom on to these things. They are so, so easy for working with wires and any kind of florals that have wires in them. Um, lineman pliers, they're in the electrical department, or you can get them at Home Depot. I think I also have them linked in my Amazon store below, so definitely check it out. So for the Black Eyed Susans, we're just going to add those into this wreath form. I love working with these wreath forms because you rarely have to glue anything down. I'm just going to take my sunflowers and it is going to look like, or the Black Eyed Susans. Look, I'm going to take these Black Eyed Susans and I am just going to sporadically place them through my wreath because I really want to make it look like these Black Eyed Susans are just growing out. Now, I took my, my dragonflies outside. I did spray paint them that navy blue color and uh, because navy blue and yellow is on my front porch, so this is the perfect color combination for 
for me. You can make your dragonflies any color. And then we're gonna add some hot glue into this. Um, you could probably put a little stem on the back of your dragonflies if you wanted to, or tie them onto your wreath form. But I love the way this turned out. It's so bright and it looks so, so good on my front porch. All right, you guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed today's projects. If you did, let me know in the comments below which ones were your favorite. I think the feather sconces, and I really like the gold base. You can do a DIY so easily with just a can of spray paint. Like, who knew? Um, if you are one of my long-term subscribers, thank you guys so much for being here. I truly, truly appreciate you. If you are brand new to the channel, hopefully you will become a subscriber and stick around for a little while. Until next time, um, I will chat with you guys soon. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>